kind of tell your story about or of who you were prior to meeting your current husband um, and how that life led you to him and how you guys were able to figure out right, we need to lock this thing in and where you guys are now. Ooh, let's see how far back we're going. As far back as you want to go. Oh, shit. Here we go. <laughs> um, before I met my husband, I think uh, probably about two, three years before that, I had my son, Jeremiah, my oldest child. Uh, his father and I, we didn't work out. Um, but I was very excited when I first got into their relationship because I thought we were going to get married and I was going to have this baby. And, you know, we were both having kids for the first time and I always wanted that. So I was so excited because I was like, yeah, I'm getting this fresh thing. We're going to be married and have this amazing life together. And legit, I got pregnant and we ended up not even talking <laughs> anymore after three months. So I uh, went through most of my pregnancy alone or without him. And, um, so when I started dating again, after I had my son, people were looking at me like, you just had a baby. But I was like, we hadn't been together. So it was like, for me, I was like, yeah, I'm ready, you know? Um, but also, uh, I got into another relationship after that. And, um, he started bringing me to church, even though I really didn't want to go. I was like, we want a church. And then the church we were going to was this <laughs> tiny church. And it had like six people in it. I'm like, from country churches. Yeah. I was like, what are we doing here? And honestly, the relationship, it didn't work out. But I thank him for helping me to uh, meet the friends that I did and get involved in the church because. I started founding God and started increasing my spirituality. I started fasting and praying and getting into a more positive space that I didn't realize that I needed help with. I started healing from a lot of things. Um, I started growing as an individual. And um, after he and I, you know, stopped talking, um, I just went into a place of, I was like, I'm being celibate. I'm not going to get back into a relationship yeah. until, you know, I know that's my husband. And I remember my friend at the time, she was, she's like a mentor to me. I love her. Um, she was just like, uh, you need to start speaking what you want in life. And she was like, if you want a husband, speak it. And I remember that year I started speaking it. I kept telling everybody, like, I'm getting married this year. And now at the time I was with my brother and I remember going to him and I'm like, Khalil, we can't live together anymore. And he was like, <laughs> he was like, what do you mean? I was like, cause I'm getting married. And he was like, who are you going to marry? I'm like, I'm getting married this year. I know it sounds far-fetched. I really don't know who it is, but I'm getting married this year. And this is 2017. And um, I started speaking it. I was in a process of healing. And I remember going on a fast for like 21 days. And I was telling God, I was like, I'm preparing for my husband. I want to get ready for this man because I know he's coming. I'm speaking it. Like, and I didn't even believe it half the time, but I told everybody else, right. you got to make it till you're making it. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, I want a husband. I want a family. I want to be a wife. I want to have more children. I was like, all these things I was desiring. And I was like, I'm ready to, you know, do this family thing. And um, I remember moving away from my brother and I moved back into my mom's house because I'm like, I'm going to save some money, you know, because when I do have my husband, I'm going to, you know, we're going to be moving into a house. And uh, I just started preparing myself for it, even though it was very far-fetched. It was like, <laughs> girl, this is, we in February. And you have no prospects. And so <laughs> um, I remember just <laughs> trying to, you know, figure all this stuff out and, um, I met Sean, um, that April, he slid in my DMs on Instagram. <laughs> and I remember, cause I, I, I'm another thing I was trying to do is really, you know, get into my feminine energy. Cause I was, I, you know, I'm a single mom. I had all the independent so woman fun. thing going on. I, you know, <laughs> I like, I don't do any of that stuff. So I was like, people would flirt with me and I wouldn't know they were flirting because I was like, I'm not used to anybody flirting with me. So I was like, <laughs> I remember he slid in my DMs. I was like, well, I'm going to work on this flirting thing that I've been trying, you know, and it worked. And a month later or two months later, he ended up coming to Texas and visiting with me. And we ended up getting married, what, six months later? That, uh, yeah, October, we ended up getting married. So um, 
it was definitely, I didn't think it was going to happen, but I was speaking into existence and I prayed about it and everything I prayed for in a man, he was like, he's well read and he's emotionally intelligent, which is a blessing. Like he is cool with giving back to his community and doing stuff for people. Like he has a heart for serving and doing all this stuff, which is something I'm really like big on, like. I, I love feeding the homeless, and giving back, and just doing stuff for people. And so finding somebody who, you know, I'm equally yoked with, it was different. It was almost weird. I remember the first time when uh, he prayed for me, and I was just like, <laughs> people do this? Like out loud, you know, people say they pray for you, but having someone stop what they're doing and just be like, let's pray. And I'm just like, I was in love. I was just like, oh my God, this man is like, Amazing. He's a great man. He's amazing father. Like he's, uh, I'm blessed. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> that's how that came to be. But prior to, I was in a healing stage before meeting him. I was really trying to get myself together and be better. Not only just for a husband, but for me too. Like <sighs> dealing with, you know, childhood traumas and dealing with the exes and feeling like you're not good enough for people and like you're not worthy and it, it was a lot and I started realizing I was like no oh, I'm worthy you know I have a child but I'm still a good woman you know I can still get out here and I deserve good things and I had to start treating myself better and letting myself know that I deserved good things you know mm, yeah well I was married for 15 years before going through a divorce um, and in that process, man, I learned so much because and I always tell people this, that I would never put my ex-wife on blast like she has her own set of issues. I always hold myself accountable to my set of issues. And I know for me, there was a lot of immaturity, a lot of stonewalling, um, just being immature. I married when I was 24 and then I felt a little pressure by the church, too, because I was like. Uh, deacon and train that kind of thing and you know the whole biblical thing about having a wife and stuff like that so I felt a little pressure behind that um, and I would say before in those 15 years the last five and I hear this a lot when I talk to other couples who divorce the last five years I knew my marriage was over mm. and I think I wasn't honest enough I wasn't willing to stand in that truth and that honesty yet because I had you know this fear of the Lord kind of thing and God hates divorce and just being a church boy and and uh, I remember a pastor of mine he told me he said Sean you can be committed to a fault and I was like yeah that's something I struggled with was being so committed trying to make things work and so and my ex-wife told me she was like Sean she was like I feel like you don't love me no more I feel like this marriage is over and I was like, no, we good. We're going to work this out. No, no, no. And she felt it. So those last five years of our marriage were really uh, challenging. So we just trying to make it work. And the last year, I told her, I said, OK, we got a divorce. And I called it. I said, we need to divorce. And that's when we had to talk with the kids. Kids are hurt. And um, I just had to be honest with myself. And I felt so much lighter after saying that, like, we need to divorce. And the funny thing about it is a lot of people say when I tell people that I divorce, they say, well, who cheated? Mm. And I was like, why does it always have to come down to cheating? I, you know, and no kudos to me, but after 15 years of marriage, I never cheated. She never cheated. At least not that I know of. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But... It's one of those things, man, where I had to be honest with myself and I can move on. We separated for that last year. And so I'm in my own spot. She's in her own spot. And we tried to rekindle and tried to make it work again. And it didn't. I was just like, oh, I'm, I'm done. Like, I'm done, done. You know, trying to make it work. And after that, I was free, man. And during, I would say, like, with those six months of that separation, uh, I had met my wife on Instagram, mm. remarrying, right? So we talked on Instagram 
And uh, I even got the little text message I share on social media sometimes. Like, you know, she talked about, oh, you're a podcaster and all that sort of stuff. I'm like, yeah. And we, so she said, let's talk on the phone because I'm not really this big texter thing. We're doing this through Instagram. And uh, we started talking, man. And every night we would talk on Skype. So I guess I'm kind of dating myself talking about Skype, right? <laughs> and we started talking. Uh, there was a lot of things that I really, really appreciated about her. I love the fact that she was one of those people that she was interested in helping people who couldn't do anything for her in return. Mm. Like she's big on helping homeless. Like these traits, I believe, are things that we have a tendency to sometimes overlook because somebody fine. You know what I'm saying? We don't look at those character traits a lot of times. Um, and I mean, granted, she was fine, too. So. We and her was talking. Uh, we would have Bible study on Skype. We would read books together. Uh, we read 48 Laws. If you can read the 48 Laws of Power with somebody, they're probably a keeper. <laughs> <laughs> if you had to give fellas a, a advice, because we're, we're in a do, new dating landscape where like sliding the DMs is like, it's kind of how you have to go. What is something that Sean did um, that set him apart? Or, or, AKA, how would you advise men to go about sliding away? You know, honestly, I can't even say. I, I think we both were in a place where we wanted those things. You know, you, you can slide into anyone's DMs if they're not in that place where they want to answer. You're not, they're not going to answer. But I was in a place where I was like, okay, you know, he seems nice. You know, we were following each other already on Instagram. You know, he had his Doctor of Love show back then. And so um, I kind of knew that he, what he was about a little bit. So it was like, and then, you know, he was like, you know, she looks good on Instagram too. So it was like, we kind of knew that we weren't just crap people, if that makes sense, based off the Instagram. Because, you know, you could tell people are kind of like, mm, mm, you probably don't want to mess with that. But he looked like a pretty good person, like I said, and he had his show already. And so uh, he seemed like a good person off the, you know, off the Instagram. But I can't sit here and say that. I, I don't know. You're literally just shooting in the dark. A lot of times where you're, like, you don't know. Sure. You don't know. Like, it's something that you have to try, though. I think everybody, you have to be prepared for the rejection um because you're probably gonna get it but i don't i can't sit here and say that he said anything fancy or anything he was just like thanks for liking all my pics and i was like oh so you, have a, you know like we didn't say anything special but i think we both were in a place where it was like okay let's try like we're willing to give love a try but if you're a very and i was we, i think we're both in a healing space or healed space i think that also helps <laughs> if you're you're gonna attract what you put out so if you're not a healed person, you're going to attract other unhealed people and you're going to go through a lot of stuff. I went through it. I did it. And I was in a healed space and he was in a healing space or healed space. And I think so. That's how we were able to attract each other and make some magic happen. But before you go jumping in people's DMs, make sure you're in a healed space or you're in a good space to, so you're not over here ruining people's lives for no reason. Do you remember... The moment, and and it could be like a mundane thing. You were in the kitchen or whatever, but the moment that you realize, yeah, this is over. My marriage is over. Ooh, yeah. Honestly, I felt that a couple times. Mm. It was more than once, and I just tried to make it work. I'm 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 such a committed person that I would do whatever to try to make it work. Uh, I've heard that a couple of different times just in my head, like, you know, it ain't working. You know, it's over. You know, you kind of kind of like got the devil and God on your shoulder kind of thing. And I just tried to fight through it. And once I got to the place where I said, this is not going to work anymore, I just took a deep breath and it just felt I felt lighter, man. I felt lighter. But in that process, too, I knew there were some issues that I need to heal from me personally because I didn't give up on love. Um, if I gave up on love, I wouldn't be married to who I have now. So I knew there were some personal issues that I needed to work through. And even my ex-wife and I, we had a conversation on the phone. I said, where did I where did I go wrong? Where did I screw up? And she told me she was like, you just got some growing to do. 
and my love was conditional. We get into an argument and I would shut down Stonewall. We wouldn't talk for a day or two. Like those were just bad times. And that came from my immaturity of not learning how to express myself. And then when I did express myself, I didn't feel like I was being heard. So I was like, I'm done. I can't keep living like this because there's too much pent up inside of me that I feel like I, I'm not being heard. When we look at social media, when we look at movies, when we look at talk shows, there's a lot of rhetoric coming from the female delegation okay. um, about how much better men need to become. Hmm. Um, so I like to ask the question, if you were a man, mm -hmm. what type of man would you be? I tell Sean all the time, if I was a man, I would go and whip it out and go pee everywhere because I... <laughs> I think it's bull crap that I can't just whip it out and go pee. Y'all yeah, don't understand. And then y'all don't even have to wipe nothing. Y'all can just shake and go. Is that bad that that's the only thing I'm thinking about <laughs> trying to be a man? That's hilarious. I'm so serious though. Like, that's what I want. I want to go and pee everywhere. I literally be seeing people pee on the side of the building and I'm just like, you can do that. And you're fertilizing on the ground. Um, no, I think if I were a man. If I were a boy. <laughs> um, I, I I want you know. I feel like I would be a classic man. I'm a classic man. You know what I'm saying? Like the Janetta. Like you know what I'm saying? Like I suited would, up yeah, with the cologne. And the... I would be fresh. You know, I feel like I would be that. And then also, I think I would try to be humble. <laughs> Me, this is. You know, this is healed Clarissa talking. This is so. This is the healed man. Healed you know? male Clarissa yes. talking. Got you. Got yes. You. Now all Clarissa, you know, I'll be, you know, pimping. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but you know, healed Clarissa. I think I would be humble because I know now what I'm attracted to, and I'm attracted to humble men. I'm attracted to kind men. I'm attracted to men who are well read. Men who give back. I want to see the man in church. He giving back to his community, he, you know, helping, you know, so I, that's, that's the stuff. Men who take care of their children, you know what I'm saying? If they have them, you know, who are good with kids, because that, that that makes the ovary single, you know? You, <laughs> see, you know, you see a man taking care of his kids and, you know, going to the park and doing the things that are in our heads, you know, because women, we get this protection thing, you know? And so we're like seeing a man take care of his children and his family. And, you know, even if he working two jobs, he making sure his family's provided for, like, that's sexy. And that's what I would want to be as a man. If I was a woman, I would be, I would be as feminine as I can be. I would want my man to be loving, caring, uh, sensitive, being able to express himself. I would want to be that safe place. Like Alicia Keys had that song, Diary. You know, just look at me as the pages of your diary. I would like to be that kind of woman where you can be safe with me. Uh, where I feel like I can help build you, not so much build a man, but be in that safe space of confidence. Like you can lean on me when times get tough. I think that would be the kind of woman I would be feminine. I have my little heels on. I'd be, I'd be all feminine out. You know what I'm saying? I'm like being able to attract that because I believe that's what men, I could be speaking for myself, but I believe that's what men love, man. I know I love me some femininity, man. I, I, and then I'm a servant at heart, so I love to serve. So if I was a woman, I'm like, you can open that door for me. You can get my groceries. You know, those kind of things. So that's, that's what I would be as a woman. Do you consider yourself a black person who happens to be a woman or a woman who happens to be black and why? Okay, let's, let's try this. Okay. A black person who happens to be a woman or a woman who happens to be a black person. I think I would put black first. I'm black. I have no problem with my, 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 I am of Jamaican descent. My mom is Jamaican, but I'm black. I, I embrace being black. I love being black. I think beautiful, black is beautiful. I love everything about being this amazing black woman that I am. Um, I love the melanin. I think being black is just, it's, it's amazing. And, um, I think, 
when you really embrace being black uh, and everything that we are and embrace how amazing that we are as a culture and what we can bring to other people's lives, especially, uh, you know, I'm a nurse by trade and I feel like being a black woman um, and live, especially living in America, <laughs> we can culturally, because we had to culturally like assimilate with everything else, we can better help people because, you know, I know the little things that, <laughs> and, and you know, that, you know, so, like you heard that story about that lady who was patting her head and the nurse called a, a, <laughs> a psychiatric eval on her because she was patting her head. We know her head is just itching, you know, her head is itchy, but she just can't get in there. So you got to pat, you know what I'm saying? Like, we know those things are, I feel like, you know, being a black woman and it's not all cases, but most, like we'll be able to take, I could take care of a white child. I feel like I could take care of a, you know, Asian child. I could take care of anybody, child, grown up, anybody, because I understand their culture and I make sure to push myself to understand their culture. Um, and that could be just me. But the black women that I have been around and the black people I have been around, they do push themselves to make sure they know things about other cultures. They're not just kind of stuck in their own you know, world. Because, you know, if we go anywhere, we have to learn <laughs> about where we are. So I, I I feel like I'm a black, how did you say it? Black woman. I black like first, I'm, woman I'm second. I'm black first, woman second, you know, like, and that's what connects me to my black man. You know what I'm saying? I am a black person first, because that's what people see. And then I'm yeah, then I would be a man because when people see black, they automatically make the automatic stereotypes kind of thing. So I know that I'm black. <laughs> I can tell from the way people look at me or the way they treat me in certain, certain ways. So I look at myself as being black first, then a man. Because if they look at me as black first, and just using that as an example, if I open the door for you as a man, it's like, it almost kind of tears down the stereotype of being black because it's like, oh, well, he opened the door for me as a black man, you know, as a black man. So I would look at myself as black first. What are your thoughts on feminism? Ooh, feminism. Take your time. <laughs> oh. Let them use you. You know, have any thoughts on feminism as I, if I, you know and would I consider myself a feminist no do I still feel like there are certain things that I would like absolutely but can I sit here and say that I'm equally at, to a man or anything and so there's some things I don't want to do I don't want to take out the trash I don't want to fill up my gas tank I, there are certain things I am totally fine with being underneath you so that you can do it first like I just there's certain things I don't want to do and you know if that means that I have to be, <laughs> like, I'm not, I, like, I, I can't consider, I wouldn't say I'm a feminist, but do I still feel like if I'm doing the job that you're doing, should I get equal pay? Absolutely, because I do that job. And a lot of women, we do a lot more because we haven't approved ourselves in the job market and stuff like that. So, yeah, when it comes to equal pay, yeah, I want my equal pay. But would I consider myself a feminist? I, I, I wouldn't say that. I, I wouldn't. Because I still want my husband to take out the trash and I don't want to touch it. I still want him to fill up my gas tank. I still want him to cut the grass. Anything outside, dealing with cars or anything, I don't I don't want to do it. It's, it's not my job. Get somebody else to do it. I want to build with you. Black girl, tell me how you really feel. I want to keep it real with you. I want to live better, eat better. I want to love better, sleep better. Yeah, I want to feel so aligned. Sublime.